is Joni from Smile and Shrinkin and I'm coming to you guys today on Saturday, July the 6th, 2019 and I'm coming to you with a cooking video. Um, today I am off of work because we had the nice long four day weekend so I thought that I would show you guys how Steve and I make low carb pizza. Um, a lot of people use the fathead pizza and we also like the fathead pizza but there's another recipe that we have used for the last several years. Um, the original author, her name was Nancy L, and um, we've used hers, and I think that it's wonderful and super easy and so, <laughs> so simple that you just can't beat it. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my camera around, and I will show you all the ingredients that we're going to use. I'll be right back. Right, so first, we're going to start off with the sauce. Now, I am making a pretty big batch of sauce. Um, pasta sauce, spaghetti sauce, pizza sauce, we use it for everything. And I thought that since I was making it, since I had the time to make it from scratch, I would go ahead and make a double batch. Um, really for pizza, it only uses about not even a half of a one, which leaves us with the nice leftovers. But my girlfriend gave us a spaghetti squash, so I'm going to make um, pasta sauce. So later this week, we can have a spaghetti squash lasagna. Anyways, um, to this section here is for the sauce. This section here is for the crust. And of course, these are the toppings. So when we're going to do it in the uh, Instant Pot, we're going to be using hamburger. We're using 90% lean, uh, as well as some hot spicy sausage. Um, we're going to brown those first, then we're going to add in the two cans of, of just plain <laughs> tomato sauce. And then over here for seasonings, let me move this out of the way. Um, I just am using, sorry, you guys. So for the seasoning, I'm using pepper, um, salt, granulated garlic, um, dehydrated chopped onions. I love this. I don't really love real onions, but these dehydrated ones, they taste bomb. Um, I use a big handful of Italian seasoning. I like to put some crushed red pepper in it. It gives it a nice kick as well as some regular minced garlic. So I'm going to put that in. And then right at the end, I add a couple tablespoons of tomato paste. It gives it a very nice, rich flavor, but this little squeezer that's kind of awesome. I'd have never, I've seen it before, but we've never used it. This is the first time we've bought it. It's fantastic. I've already used it three or four times and there's still almost a whole bunch left. So anyways, we're going to start with that for the sauce. Believe it or not, the crust is simply made with three eggs and three cups of cheese. We usually use two mozzarella, one of the blended cheese, and then you add the seasoning to it. You scramble the eggs, add the cheese. It's a one-to-one -one ratio, three eggs, three cups of cheese. Spray the thing down, bake it off, and then when it's done, you flip it over. Then you add the sauce and your toppings. Since our sauce is so nice and meaty, that works as a topping as well as the sauce. Add to it usually for us, pepperoni. We have some black olives. I love black olives on mine. And then we had some roasted vegetables from dinner the other night. It has some onions, some orange peppers and red peppers. They taste fantastic. So I'm going to dice those up, put it on, and that's what we're going to have. So I'm going to go ahead and show you kind of step by step. I, You guys have seen me make pasta sauce before, so I might be, that one might be a little bit quick, but showing you how to put that um, crust together, ch -ch, way better than cauliflower crust. Anyways, here we go. I am here with my Instant Pot. I've got the hamburger is browning. I've seasoned it all up with my seasonings. Um, this is a little trick I watched on, because I watch lots of YouTube videos, you guys. Anyways, that you know, if you have an Instant Pot, this little thing swirls around, but if you clip it here while you're cooking it, it helps it to not swirl around. So I'm just breaking it up with my chopping, whatever it's called from Pampered Chef. It does a great job. Sorry, guys. And um, once it's brown, I'm gonna pull it aside and then I will start browning up the sausage. I will be right back. Hey, you guys, I have one more little tip or trick that I can share with you. That seems... One other thing, when you're breaking up sausage, I don't know if you've ever noticed that it's a lot harder to break up than hamburger. Um, maybe because of the fat content, probably. Anyways, my bestie Chris taught me this trick that if you add just a little bit of water to it while you're breaking it up, comes across like a total champ and I have found that to absolutely be true uh, to be true and then the thing is you're gonna drain it anyways it's pork it, it has it renders a lot of fat you don't want to add that to your sauce so it just cooks off and you'll tra drain it off just the same way you would the fat so that's my little trick right now okay you guys the sausage is just getting finished off I'm gonna give it a drain and then I'm gonna put it in with the hamburger and start putting in the sauce and the rest of the herbs and 
and all of that. Now, could you do this recipe if you do not have an Instant Pot? Of course you can, silly. You can do it semi-homemade and just buy your favorite pasta sauce and use that. You can do it on the stove top and just let it cook for a while and get that nice, yummy flavor. The thing that I love the most about using my Instant Pot is one, one pot for the mess on the sauce because you can saute in the same um, pot as you do um, make the rest of the sauce in, but I just, once everything's kind of cooked and I put the rest of the things in, I just bring it up to pressure. I cook it for five minutes and it tastes exactly like it did when I used to cook it all day long on the stove top. So that's the part I like. It just infuses all of the food. So I am gonna get this next step going and then I will show you, I'm gonna put it on my little <laughs> doodly dob and then I can show you how I do the rest of the seasoning right back. Okay, I am going to get this strained up, grab my pot, give it a dump, and what I've got going over here ooh, is I have a bowl <laughs> with my strainer right inside the bowl so it can drip all that extra fat off. I don't know if you can see that or not, but I'm getting most of the fat drained as much as I can. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put it right back in, all the meat. Oh, it's up on my counter, because I need it. Oh. Just let me get all that good meat in here. And I'm obviously jamming. Sorry, over here. Okay. Open two cans of sauce. I just use the organic tomato sauce from Costco, but you can use whatever you like. You know, sometimes I take a little help from the store and I'll just use the Hunt's um, regular spaghetti sauce, especially when it goes on sale for like a dollar a can. You just can't beat that. Uh, one. And two. And you know what, actually, even as I say that and I'm looking down, I might need a little bit more sauce in this because that's a little bit wimpy for the amount of meat that I have. And I do plan on using it as a nice uh, meat sauce, but I think I will grab one more. Oh, speaking of, because it was on sale. Sorry, I'm blasting you guys out. I'm rocking out. Let me go turn that down. I'm gonna pause. <laughs> I'm adding just a hunt's meat. It'll blend in with these two. Kind of cut it out. Cut it down a little bit, and I'm gonna do this seasoning. Let me do this real quick. Do you know, sometimes I get letters from YouTube telling me that I can't monetize my channel on this video because I'll use a song in the background and it shows up and it could break the copyright laws if I was to charge, if I was to make money from this episode. But I just figure, I have, I have a lot of nice subscribers and I think that's wonderful, but I don't feel like making money. I'm okay. <laughs> I don't think, I don't think there's enough interest in, in the DS or in just these different things that I'm kind of interested in, you know, Stitch Fix and things like that, to have a huge following where you're gonna make money. So I just always think it's funny that they found my little channel. Anyways, okay, so I gave that a good stir. I'm gonna add in the seasoning. Um, I tend to just use my palm. Can you see? Just a little palm. I would guess that's about a teaspoon of pepper. Maybe a little bit more. My husband loves pepper. Um, I'm gonna do the same, just a little bit more granulated garlic, just a good shake. About a tablespoon of the onion. I, I've already added a little bit in when I was browning the meat. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the Italian seasoning. This one I'm gonna go a little bit heavier. Oh, I'm gonna go super heavy. <laughs> Can you see it? <laughs> That's all right, it'll give it great flavor. Let me give it one more stir. And then I'm gonna turn off my Instant Pot because it was still on uh, saute from when I was doing the beef and the pork. And I'm gonna take my thing off my little arm so you can see what it looks like. It looks delicious is what it looks like. <laughs> okay, let me turn this around. You know how good I am at this. Uh, can you see how yummy that looks? Oh, and it's already starting to bubble. That means it's gonna come to pressure very quickly. Um, let me go this way. Can, 
I'm gonna have to turn it around. You guys know I'm not good at that. Hold on. Okay, you guys, I also forgot to show. I took a, about a half a teaspoon of red pepper flake and I also added another tablespoon of the minced fresh garlic, you know, from Costco. You know what I'm talking about. Gave it a good stir. It already has a little bit of heat from the hot, uh, the hot sausage it gives it a little heat, but the red pepper flake does even better. So, um, but it doesn't make it too spicy because I'm kind of a wuss. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, I've got it going to from off. I'm going to put my lid on. <laughs> At least I think I'm going to put my lid on. Come on. There we go. I'm going to set it to ceiling, not venting. And then I'm going to come down here, hit manual. It's, it's set for five minutes, so I'm going to just leave it there. So we're all done with the sauce. I'm going to come over here. Um, I'm going to start putting together the crust and I will cook the crust. And I probably will not put everything together until later tonight because that's when my honey gets home. So let me turn and move the arm around and I will show you how we make our crust. I will be right back. Okay, you guys, I am back. I just cracked my three eggs into a bowl and I'm gonna give them a quick whisk so they're nice and scrambled. <laughs> okay, that's put together. I'll set that over. Now I'm just gonna measure out um, three cups of cheese. We use, now can you grate your own? Yes, of course you can. And would that be the better thing to do? Probably. Excuse me one second. Sorry, getting a call. And um, I am going to, but <laughs> let's be real, my real life says. So I'm going to measure out three cups, two of the mozzarella. This bag came with four cups. We'd already used it a little bit. So it still leaves a nice uh, two cups there. And it leaves us some for the top. And I always call that top cheese the glue, the glue that holds all of your other toppings down. Um, for this one, I'm gonna actually just dip it, my measuring cup right in the bag. So I hopefully won't make as much of a mess. I've met me. <laughs> Speaking of that, I w watched part of that video back and saw that when I dumped the meat back in, it totally spilled on the back. So I already cleaned that up in case you caught that too. <laughs> I got that one all cleaned up. So we are all done with this cheese, the cheddar jack cheese. Now, um, some people use just mozzarella cheese. In fact, the recipe called for just mozzarella cheese, but my husband, Steve, um, when he makes it, he usually adds the other cheese and it really has a nice extra little flavor. Okay, so I'm gonna just put this to the side for right now. And then I'm gonna grab my seasoning and I will be right back. Uh, these two, these two are the ones we add for the eggs. A little bit of granulated garlic, and that's probably a quarter of a teaspoon, I would think. And then the um, Italian seasoning, and that probably a good tablespoon, I would say, gives that a nice flavor and give it another swirl. Now, um, we use the same one-to-one -one ratio that um, for, the, for the total pizza that we're making. And let me grab that pan too. This is my, <laughs> sorry, this is my pizza pan. Let me show you. Um, I don't know how big it is. It's a pretty nice size pizza pan and it's kind of deep. I think originally this might be a tart pan since it has such a nice lip but the bottom of it's really nice and heavy. And so I'm gonna give it a quick spray of canola spray. And usually I spray this right over the sink and that's so, <laughs> there's any overflow, it doesn't make my rest of my kitchen too greasy or slippery to walk in. Give it a little spray. And um, I'm gonna give this a quick toss with my hands. Just keeping it real, this is how I really cook. My hands are clean, I promise. <laughs> okay, and so then here, I'm gonna take my scrambled eggs that have the seasoning in it, and I'm gonna pour that right over the cheese. And because I wanna get all that good liquid in, um, I'm gonna actually grab the rubber scraper. Got one right here. <laughs> Just to make sure I got all of it. Yeah, that's probably another tablespoon of egg. I'm glad I did that. Okay, and set that aside. And then I'm just gonna give it a stir, just so, so it's covering all that cheese. Now, 
a lot of people, like, you know, it's funny, my brother, he's doing low carbon. He looks so good. Can I just say he and my sister-in-law both look fabulous. I don't even know how much they've lost, but man, are they looking good. <laughs> my poor brother came the other day and his pants were like almost falling off. So he finally uh, broke down and got himself some new clothes. He looks just great. <laughs> I told you guys about my brother. <sighs> he's like one of the sweetest human beings I've ever met. He is so smart and so funny. He's seriously the smartest person I've ever met. And certainly one of the most funny and genuine loving guys. Anyways, enough bragging. <laughs> um, so this is what it's going to look like. Let me give you a quick look. It just literally just coats that cheese and it makes it into, just looks like a bowl of cheese, really. And then I'm gonna pour it over here on the pan and then give it a little smooth so that it's evenly distributed. And then I'm gonna give it a bake and that'll bake this bottom crust. Now, I remember, the reason I started telling you about my brother, sorry, I digress. Um, when my brother first started doing low carb, he had, <laughs> was doing so good, but he was kind of missing pizza. Like, who doesn't, you guys? <laughs> My, anyways, so he and his wife had been doing, looking at recipes, and he tried that cauliflower crust pizza. And it sucks, this is so much more delicious. It is, it just is way better tasting. And I said to him, I said, I promise you, try mine. He tried it, he wrote me back, OMG. He was like, that is so much better, and it really is. So I'm just giving this a good flattening, like you would, dough. Mm -hmm. Now, this kind of pizza, you can pick up because it's a little bit thick enough to do that. That If you like a little bit of a thicker crust, you can do a four to four ratio, four eggs, four cups of cheese. But my husband and I, we like the thinner one, which is the three to three. And then, so once it's smoothed out, just where you're, cooking it you're gonna give this a little bit of a bake until it's a little bit golden brown so I'm gonna show it to you when it's done cooking oh when I started to tell you <laughs> I have a tension span the size of a mite uh, anyways um, I use the same recipe the one-to-one -one ratio when we make enchilada casseroles I use one egg one cup of cheese and instead of using this big pan like I do for pizza let me show you I just use a little cake pan you see how much smaller that is and I use one-to-one -one. it cut because this is still pretty big it's not tiny um, it makes it about this thin like a flour tortilla shaped so I'll make three of them but I do them just one egg to one cup of cheese and blend it up put it in one and then I have three of them and then bake them off and I use them as the tortillas for my enchilada casserole which is just enchilada sauce hamburgers uh, onions stuff like that and oh, it's so good the first time I made it my husband said are we cheating and I said no babe it's low carb he goes are you kidding me this is so good I said I know <laughs> anyways okay so I am gonna put this in the oven at uh, I don't remember what degrees but I'm gonna look it up and I'll be right back hey did I tell you I'm gonna put this real this crust recipe in the bottom when I upload this so if you ever want to try it you can try it so I'll be right back Okay, you guys, I just double checked the recipe. It is 450 for 15 to 20 minutes until it's golden brown. Now, because you're fully cooking the crust, you wanna make sure that any toppings that you're adding to your pizza, that they are also fully cooked because once you put it back in, put together as the pizza, it, you wanna make sure that everything is fully cooked So, because you're just warming it through and melting the cheese. So that's my little tip. I am gonna leave that whole recipe at the bottom here and I'm gonna get this in the oven. I'll show it to you when it comes out and then I will video record again later when we actually put the real pizza together. I still have um, olives to cut and veggies to cut and the sauce smells amazing in my house. The five minutes are up here in one minute and then I'm just gonna let it slow release and it'll just stay warm. That sauce will just stay warm until my husband gets home. There's no reason to, bro to break what's not <laughs> fixed so it's not broken. Oh, if you only knew. Anyways, so that's what's going on. I will catch up with you in just a little bit. Bye. Hey, you guys, um, the crust looks like this. I took it right out of the, it's a little bit darker than I normally cook it, just a little bit, not bad. I think the flavor's gonna be out of this world. But you can see that you can just absolutely pick it up <laughs> and see about how thick it is. It's about mm, maybe a 
a third of an inch thick. And you could go a little thinner if you like it even thinner. Um, with it being this way, because of the way I load it, I still use a fork and I just put it on a plate, but you can absolutely pick it up. I think it tastes best if you eat it the first day, but um, I'm gonna show you how I <laughs> decorate it. Decorate it. So let me move. I Again, I cut up all the olives into slices. I diced up all the veggies. I've got my slices of pepperoni ready. I'm gonna load this up with sauce. I'll be right back. Okay, so I just put some scoops on. I should turn the light on, hold on. Okay, so I put some sauce in the middle. I'm gonna go ahead and decorate it around. Now, I usually just take it all the way to the edges. I don't really make a crust per se because you don't need to. It already has that crisp um, little edge on it, which is so good. Oh, I'm gonna grab one more scoop. Okay, I did a scoop and a half because <laughs> um, I wanna take it all the way to the edges. Um, it's nice and oh, it just smells incredible here. So it's all over the whole thing. It's nice and even. Now I'm gonna grab the cheese. I forgot to do the cheese. Before I do cheese though, I'm gonna go ahead and put the other toppings on. And then I'm only gonna put cheese on the top. Sometimes I sprinkle a little bit on first. Mm, I'm gonna put a little cheese on first, hold on. <laughs> Sorry, mm, I should have planned better. Um, I'm gonna give it just a light dusting. You don't need a lot because with the cheese in the crust, it's already nice and cheesy. So I just did a light cheese here, and then I'm gonna put the toppings on. Let me see if I can <laughs> make this go down so you can see it a little bit better. I'm gonna put pepperoni and the, because in the sauce, there's sausage and hamburger. And then uh, I'm gonna add my veggies. I know my husband, he likes jalapenos on his. And so I probably will put a little bit of jalapeno on half. <laughs> it would burn my face off. I'm not, I, I can't really have the too spicy of things. It kind of irritates my stomach a little bit. I'm gonna do two more. Just a little bit more. Oh, come on, Weiss. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, there we go. One, two. And then I'm going to sprinkle all the veggies. I'm going to just, again, use my fingers. Nothing wrong with that. And this is just um, caramelized. They were roasted. We had them with our steak yesterday, or the day before yesterday. We had steak. So it's just probably a couple pieces of of onion, caramelized onions, caramelized peppers, and, and I just cooked them in olive oil, so they do have a little bit of oil on there, but the flavor is dyna dynamite. With Italian seasoning, uh, it had, sorry, that's what I said. Um, it had Italian seasoning, olive oil, salt, pepper, and uh, Italian seasoning, salt, pepper. That's all, <laughs> pretty basic is what I usually do that with when I'm um, roasting my vegetables to have with steak or whatever. And oh, uh, so good, they turn out so good. You know, it's funny, my friend Kristen, when she was here, when we went on our cruise, she got to have the roasted vegetables the way we do it and she thought they were out of this world too. So if you need a second opinion, <laughs> I'm sure Kristen would give you the A-OK. -okay. All right, you guys, I am gonna go grab the jalapenos, be right back. Oh, I suck at this. Okay, I have just grabbed the little jalapeno, nacho jalapenos like you have in the jar. They come already sliced. I am going to try to just use my fork and put a few of these on, uh, mostly because I don't want to get jalapeno hands. And I won't put too many on, maybe five or six. And that way, if he will like that, he'll like that it gives it a nice little kick. And we'll do half. Now, usually, you know, this looks like it's a nice size and it is even when my husband is at his hungriest like after working like on Saturdays today is Saturday he works all day like we call it a bell he works from bell to bell from the time the store opens to the time that the store closes 
he works all day and they're supposed to get lunch but um <laughs> when you're in the sales it doesn't always happen so saturdays he tends to be a little bit hungrier even when he has said his hungriest i barely can eat a half of a pizza i when i first had my ds i was only able to eat about one slice um now if i'm having a big tummy day because you know when you're a sleever or a deser you have some days where your tummy you can just you know you get very full quickly and it's amazing you're like wow and actually it kind of pisses me off when it happens and then you have other days where you're like i cannot believe i ate that with my little tummy i can't believe it <laughs> so even on a hungry day I, I can usually only eat um maybe two slices and that still would take me a while so i use the last this is only about a cup of cheese between the bottom and the top because remember this originally had four cups of cheese we'd already eaten a cup I used two in the crust and then one sprinkled about. I'm gonna add a little bit of Parmesan cheese. Excuse me one second, because why wouldn't I? I just bought some at the store, it was on sale. Yay, Parmesan cheese. That's not part of the recipe, but why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you add just a little bit more flavor and that? So I'm gonna give that a light little sprinkle, just a little bit around, not a lot. Maybe two tablespoons. It just adds another layer of flavor. So here is the top. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in um, again everything on here is fully cooked so I am gonna just put it in the oven to warm it up but I am NOT gonna do that until my husband gets home so that it's nice and fresh when he gets here I'm gonna start putting together a Caesar salad to serve with it and I think that that's all I'll check back in and I'll show you what what how it turned out and what it looks like be right back okay you guys the, the pizza is done it looks so good. Steve's the one that cut it up for me. I asked him to be on video. He said he did not want to be on video today. So maybe next time. Okay, I'm gonna grab a piece here. Show you how good it turned out. And I could pick this up and eat it. It's a little bit soft, but I prefer to eat it with a fork. So. Give it a sample. Mm, that's delicious. Okay, you guys. Mm, mm, that's really good. I'm gonna leave the directions down below. I'll try to put in, I have a screenshot of how to do it. I'll just put it on the, on the description below. And if you have any questions, just send me a message. Thanks for watching. See you next time. <laughs> My husband's being a nerd. <laughs> Bye.